back. My name is Francis. I'm a medical student at the University of Sydney. I'm a bit time poor at the moment, hence the slightly dishevelled appearance um, and also this video. It's just going to be a quick one this time. I'm just going to talk to people that are interested at studying medicine at the University of Sydney potentially. First off, getting in. You need to have done an undergraduate degree to get into medicine at the University of Sydney. I did mine in science, which comes in particularly helpful in the first block at UCID Medicine. But other people that I know have done nursing, they've done commerce and a number of other subjects. So as long as you're keen, you can still do it. You need to complete the GAMSAT and you want to get around probably the top 1% of the people that get the GAMSAT in order to get an interview. Then of course you need to attend your interview and do well at the interview, following which you will get an offer to the University of Sydney, if you've done well at the interview. Unfortunately, not everyone does well enough. Now on to the structure of the course. It's broken into five blocks. The first block is basic clinical sciences. So if you didn't do science in your undergraduate degree, no worries, they're gonna teach you all of the science stuff that you need to know. However, be aware, it's very fast paced and uh, even I struggled with it a bit and I did science as my undergrad. So probably it's useful over your break if you know that you're getting into the University of Sydney, you haven't studied science, that you start looking into some of the information that could be important. Not so much medical information, but just basic science stuff. And they do release a course um, that you can do online that helps with this eventually. The block after the first, which is basic clinical sciences, is musculoskeletal block. Following that you have a respiratory block, following that you've got hematology block, and then after that you've got cardiology block, which is what I'm currently in. Each of the blocks lasts a varying amount of time, somewhere between 13 weeks, which is the first block, all the way down to just five weeks. And after each block you get a week off, you also get a week before every test, every major test. And so that means that if your block ends with a major test, you get a week off, you do your major test, and then you get another week off. It's kind of nice. On to the smaller structure now, the microstructure. So the University of Sydney, I really like it because of its week to week structure. It starts off with you get Saturday, Sunday off, just like any other university. But you also get an extra day off each week, which you can use to study um, if you're a good student. Uh, but uh, aside from that, you'll get one day a week that you spend in hospital, and that was a big part of me choosing to go with the University of Sydney. I wanted to be able to get that hands-on practical experience from the get-go, and it really complements all the learning that you're doing at the university. So during haematology block, you spend that one day a week on the heme ward for the most part. Aside from those two days, you also have a day which is mostly just lectures, that's Tuesday. Fridays also tend to be mostly just lectures. But then Thursdays are a combination of lectures and practicals. Your practicals can be in anatomy, which means you'll go to the anatomy lab and you'll look at dissections, um, because they've already been dissected, they're called prosections. And you try to identify different parts of the body there. Another practical subject is histology and pathology. So you'll go to the microscopy lab and you'll look under those microscopes at slides of cells from people that had varying conditions as well as just looking at normal cellular life. Exams and assessments now. The three major tests are called RSAs. You've got RSA 1 after the initial block which is on basic clinical sciences. Then you've got RSA 2, which is after a respiratory block, so that encompasses musculoskeletal subjects as well as respiratory subjects. And then you have your final test, the RSA 3, at the end of the year after cardiology block. That's what I'm stressing about at the moment. These tests tend to be multiple choice questions, although that being said, some of the multiple choices have like 12 options. There are other tests as well, including anatomy, where you'll go around different prosections looking at uh, where a pin is placed in the body. You have to identify the body part. There's also a pathology test, which is the other thing that I'm stressing about right now because that's later this week. And that's one where you look under slides, you have to identify the pathology, say what it is, what caused it. Um, additionally, we also have macro pathologies, so they'll have organs encased in special jars and you've got to identify the pathology there, what the organ is, and again, how that pathology comes to be. The other tests that you get are on practical skills. So in the hospital, each block, you have to do something called the CEX, which involves either having a tutor, being a doctor usually, look at you taking a history or performing a physical examination on a patient that's relevant to that block. Um, and you have to do that well enough to pass, but it doesn't go towards your grades. The other major practical assessment is called the OSCEs, and that's a much more stressful time 
because they take you to a different clinical school, you've got to do a random assortment of examinations and histories, and you do get graded on those, but it doesn't count towards your grade at the end of the year, you've just got to make sure you pass it well enough. The final thing that's relevant, I guess, to assessments is that you have a research project that you start in first year. First year, you pretty much just need to pick what the research project's going to be on and do a little bit of research into it maybe, but for the most part, you do your research project over the other years of your medical degree. Some other interesting tidbits, aside from the hematology block, which is taught entirely on your clinical school, all of the lectures are recorded and even prior years recordings are uploaded, so you can get ahead on those, which is something that I've started to do. Hematology block's a little bit different because unlike the rest of the blocks, you spend most of that at your clinical school rather than on campus. And so the lectures aren't all recorded, unfortunately. On your clinical days that you spend in the hospital, they tend to be broken into three parts. First part is communications, where you'll learn how to take histories from patients. So, hey, a patient comes in with a cough, take a history. You learn what questions you need to ask and a bit about what the answers mean. The other part of your clinical day will be procedural skills, where you learn how to do things like taking blood pressure, vena puncture, those sort of things. And the final part is examination skills, and that involves physical examinations on patients. So a patient comes in, how to do a respiratory exam, which involves listening to the chest with your stethoscope and all of those sorts of things. One nice thing is that if you're in the hematology block and you're learning about hematology examinations, you're going to have a hematologist teaching you. At least that's how it was for me. Okay, so the last thing that I'm going to talk about is just to be aware about your clinical schools. While you might be thinking, hmm, I'm studying uh, medicine at the University of Sydney, I'm going to move right next to the campus so that I've always got easy access to everything I need, and once I'm set up there, even though it might be a bit expensive, I don't have to move. Yes, most of your subjects in first and second year will be on campus. However, your clinical school, which is the hospital that you spend one day a week in in your first two years, that could be very far away. I'll have a link in the description if you want to learn a bit more about those schools. Uh, however, the other thing to keep in mind is you might be thinking, oh yes, it's just one day a week, I can make the travel for that and I'll just be situated near my campus for everything else. No, your third and fourth year, you're gonna be almost entirely at that hospital. So it's a good idea to be a little bit flexible with where you wanna live. Um, ideally, you don't pick it until you've heard which clinical school you're gonna be in and that way you can maybe pick somewhere either in between your clinical school and the university, or you can pick somewhere close to your clinical school, thinking ahead, or if you're happy to move later, yeah, live near the university and then move back towards the clinical school. Okay, so that's everything that I've got today. Just a quick video. If you've got questions, please do ask away because I didn't spend too much time explaining details, but I'm um, looking forward to seeing you guys around campus. Bye.